it's Christy. Welcome to day five of my 2021 holiday card series. Today I'm going to be using the brand new City Sidewalks stamp set from Hello Bluebird. So I've stamped my images out in Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm going to start with this big yellow taxi because I think it's such a fun image. It really gives those vibes of Christmas in the city. So I'm going to color it in the traditional like yellow taxi colors. I chose Y11, Y13, Y15, and Y17. I started with the Y17 and added a bit of shadow with that. And now I'm blending out with the Y15. If you don't have four yellow markers, you could always skip the Y11. If I were to leave off one, that would be the one that I would leave off. But because it is such a large image, I thought it would be fun to have four shades because that Y11 does add an extra bit of highlight. So I just think it it adds something nice, especially right there next to the windshield. But like I said, if you only have three shades, then go ahead and use those. So I used the Y13 to blend up and then the Y11 to finish that off. And normally I would also color like a glow inside the um, street light, but the street light actually cuts out the little inner panels. So I'm going to skip over that and move on to the details of my taxi. I'm using T0, T1, and T3 to do the little taxi sign at the top and also the front bumper. And I am going to go back and do the grill with these shades as well. So I use the T3 down at the bottom, blend it up with the T1, and then the T0 for the highlight. And now I'm going back to that grill. I wanted that to be just a little bit darker, so I'm being more heavy handed with that T3 and adding a bit more shadow and then blending that out with the T1 and then the T0. And I actually left a little white space there. For the tires, I'm going to keep that T3, but it's going to become my lightest. I'll add in the T5 and the T7. So I'm using the T7 on either side of those, and I'll have the highlight in the center. And then I'm also going to do the little plate in the front of the taxi just to have extra contrast. So I'm blending out the T7 with the T5, just pulling that color toward the center, kind of feathering it in and then I'll fill the rest of that space in with the T3. So you kind of get the glare of um, the street, or in my case, it's gonna be driving on snow. It'll be like a snowy street. So it's kind of like the reflection of the light there in the center. I'm also going to do the street light with these shades, but I'm only going to put my shadows on the right hand side. Since the taxi is going to be on the left, I figured that the lights of the taxi would create a highlight on the left side of that street lamp. So I'm just going down the right hand side with the T7 and then I'm going to bring in that T5 once again and just making sure to catch the edge of that T7 because it is such a dark color. It's nearly black. So I really want to break that up. I don't want to have a harsh line where those two shades meet. So just really pulling the edge of that T7 into the midtone with that T5. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the T3. Just really making sure to pull that color toward the left hand side so that you get a really soft blend and everything looks nice and smooth because this should look like a smooth metal object. So that's what the look I'm going for. I didn't want to leave the headlights plain white, so I used a little of Y quadruple zero to add just a tiny hint of color. And then I'm moving on to my polar bear. 
and I didn't want to use grays since I already had a lot of grays going on in the card so I went with E50 and E51 just barely using a little bit of that E51 on the outer edges and blending out only a tiny bit so most of his body is still going to stay white and then I'm going to grab my colorless blender and go over the edge of that E50 to just soften it into the white areas so it looks a little more blended and then because I wanted to have that color on one other place on the card I decided to choose one of the gifts to just have this kind of um, tan beige shade in the background and then I'll add more details to that later on. For his muzzle I went back to my T0, T1, and T3. I forgot to do that when I had them out. I just wanted a little bit of a darker shade there. And then I'm moving on to some of my reds. I'm choosing R24, R29, and R39. I'm going to choose one of the gifts in the pile and I decided to go with this rectangular one down toward the bottom. I thought the red would look really nice next to the yellow because the gifts are actually going to get piled on top of the taxi. I thought that would be kind of fun. So I started at the bottom with the R39 for my shadow because I wanted that taxi sign to be casting a shadow there and then blended up with the R29 and then used the R24 for a nice highlight. And then I decided that I would do the bow in red. You can't be a nice red Christmas bow. So again, I just added some shadows with that R39 to kind of accentuate the different parts of that bow. And then my R29 was looking like it wanted to leak a little bit, so I just popped the other end of the barrel off the cap I mean and uh, that kind of equalizes the pressure inside some people say that that is not true but it works for me so I don't know <laughs> I guess you can decide for yourself but um, usually when it's going to leak that saves it so now I decided to do one more gift in the pile and I decided to go with that tiny little gift over on the right hand side just making sure that it's not near the other gift that I'm coloring so I can have nice little pops of color here and there. And then I also did the hat on top of the polar bear. And then I'm moving on to the reindeer and I'm coloring him with E53, E55, and E57. Using the E57 first to do that strip down the top of his head going toward his nose. And then, of course, his little legs and his ears. And then I'm going to blend that out with the E55. And again, these colors take a little bit of effort to get them to blend, but the results that they create are worth it to me. It's just the perfect deer shade. So I'm using that E55 and then the E53. You can see as I first start, like it just doesn't really want to blend, but if you go over it a couple of times, you can usually get them to play along together. Uh, sometimes it works better than others, but on smaller images, I have more success than on larger ones. For his little face, I went with E53 and then pulled in E51 for the midtone and then E50 for the highlight. So I'm going to fill that in and then I'll use the E51 and the E50 to color the insides of the ears and the antlers. I used E59 to color in his nose and then I'm moving on to one of my green combos and that is YG21, YG23, and YG25. I wanted something that was a bit more of a yellow green, so that's why I went with this combo. And I'm going to do the reindeer's sweater. And for some reason, my YG23 is darker than my YG25, and I always forget that. So I always start with that YG25, and then when I lay in the YG23, I realize, oh, I needed to reverse those. So I did that for his sweater and filled in with the YG21, 
and then I'm coming down to do one of the gifts in the pile and I forgot again. So I started with the YG25, but then I went in with the YG23, went back to the YG25 to blend that out and then filled everything in in the center with the YG21. My other green combo I wanted to be darker and a little bit more of blue toned. So I chose G43, G46, and G28. So the G28 I'm going to use as my darkest and I'm using that to kind of outline this little wreath here. And then I'm blending out that with the G46. And again, just doing like little circular motions to get those two markers to blend nicely. And then I'll do the same with the G43 because it is quite a bit lighter than the G46. But I do really like the way these colors look together so it's worth the tiny bit of extra effort. And then I'm going to move down and do another gift in the pile. So I chose the one in the center that's right above the red rectangular gift. So I'm starting with that G28 down at the bottom, blending up with the G46, and then I'll use the G43 for the highlight. And then I'm also going to use those shades to do the scarf on my reindeer. So he'll have a little green ensemble going on, but I think that darker green adds a nice contrast to the more light yellow green. So just uh, finishing that off and then I'm going to move on to a new combo. I wanted to add some aqua in here because I think it goes really well with red and green. So I chose BG10, BG11, and BG13. I'm going to do the Polar Bears scarf. So I started with the BG13 and added my shading on either side of his head and then down the front parts. Blended out with the BG11 and the BG10 and then used the BG10 to do the white of his hat. And then I'm going to do another one of the gifts with this combo, starting with the BG13 at the bottom and blending up. And then the final gift I decided to do with just the lighter two shades. I used the BG11 and then the BG10 and let that fade to the white. I went back to my R24 to do the bow on that gift and I went with BG13 and BG18 to do the bow on the pale tan gift. So I used the BG18 down at the bottom and then blend it up with the BG13. And then I'm going to add in some details. So I'm doing some stripes on the aqua gift up at the top. And then I'm going to turn my marker the other direction and do some more stripes to create a, a loose plaid. I'm also going to add some little polka dots to the polar bear's scarf with that BG18. Just dotting them here and there, making sure that they're far enough apart from each other that they're really visible. And then I wanted to add a few more details, so I'm going to go back to my R24 once again and add some tiny polka dots to that tan gift. And I'm going to do two different shades on there, so I'm making sure that they're also spread pretty far apart. Just trying to do little circles on there, but my nib on that R24 I think needs replacing. It has like a little piece that's hanging off of it so it was hard to get a nice round dot so I ended up having to make them slightly larger to cover up one that wasn't really very round and then I'm going to go back to my BG13 and dot that in uh, between the red so that it ties into that bow and that is going to finish up the details with Copics, but I also wanted to add some with my white gel pen. So I grabbed my Sakura white jelly roll and I'm going to do some more stripes on that rectangular red package down at the bottom and just making sure to kind of skip over that bow. 
and I also did a diagonal stripe going in the opposite direction on the small yellowish green box. Then I took my black Sakura Jelly Roll pen and got that started off to the side and went over the eyes of my critters to make them nice and bright and shiny. And then I trimmed all of these images out with their matching dies. For my background, I'm going to start with a piece of Lawn Fawn Rainforest cardstock and die cut that with the largest of the new nesting half circle dies. And then I'm going to add some Distress Oxide on there, starting with Chipped Sapphire. And I'm going to come in from all edges and just darken that up. By starting with that Rainforest cardstock, I already have a really dark sky, which is what I was going for, but I don't have to use so much ink and I don't have to do nearly as much blending. So then I'm gonna take some black soot and I'm gonna come in with a little bit of that as well just to really deepen up those edges. I'm just using a tiny bit on the very edges of that to really make that center portion pop. Then I'm going to grab my um, previous ink blending tool and just blend out the edge of that toward the center. And then I'm going to add some Gansai Tambi Starry Colors. I'm gonna use this pearly shade, so I just added a bit of water and then mixed that up until it was nice and fluid. And then I'm going to tap that all over that background to create some nice snowfall. Then I'm gonna work on my sentiment. I popped a piece of Lawn Fawn Black Licorice cardstock in my Misty. I'm treating that with my EK Success Powder Tool. And then I'm going to stamp in Versamark ink. And I'm going to do some selective stamping. So I've masked off two parts of the sentiment. It says it's Christmas time, but I'm just going to use the word Christmas. And I masked that off with some post-it tape. And then just peeled that off before I stamped it down. I'm going to coat that in some white embossing powder and then I will grab my heat tool and heat that up off to the side for about 30 seconds. Then I like to bring it to the back and then the front just to try to eliminate some warping and heat that until it's nice and white and shiny. While I have my Misty out, I'm going to stamp on the inside of my card using Lawn Fawn Mermaid ink on some MFT Snow Cone cardstock. And I'm stamping out that adorable little squirrel with her stack of gifts in her arms and the sentiment from me for you. So I stamped that until I had a really good impression and now I am ready to start assembling. I've die cut the big snowflake out of some white cardstock. And then I also use the new Slimline Hill and Dale to do a snow drift so that it fits at the bottom of this little half circle. So I'm gonna glue that down first with some Barely Art craft glue. And then I'm going to use that same glue to add my large snowflake. I love that it has this super fine nozzle so you can just dot that glue on behind this delicate snowflake. So before I adhere that um, half circle down, I want to get that snowflake down right where I want it. I want to make sure it's not hanging off the edges of the card because I want it to still fit inside an envelope. I am going to send this out for Christmas. And then I'm going to take that um, half circle and glue that down right over top. And I'm not using any foam tape on today's card. I wanted to try to keep it flat since I'm going to have lots of elements anyway that's going to add dimension. I decided not to use any foam tape to add any more because that's going to be really great for mailing. So now I'm ready to start adding in my images and I'm going to start with this street lamp over to the right hand side of the scene. And then I'm going to take the little wreath and I'm going to hang that up right underneath the top portion of that light. And then I've got that little red bow that is going to go down at the bottom of the wreath. So I'll just get all that situated first. And then I'm going to grab my taxi and my two little critters that are going to be inside it. The polar bear is going to be the taxi driver, so I'm adding a tiny bit of glue down toward his waistline and then tucking him down behind that taxi. And then I'm going to do the same with the reindeer. 
and just try not to smear that glue there as I pull him through. You could also have them not sticking out the front windshield. They would look really cute behind it, but I just thought it would be fun to have them kind of sticking out because you can see a little bit more of them that way. Um, otherwise, they'd have to be tucked in a little bit tighter. And then I'm going to add that taxi at kind of like a, a tilt. So it's like as if they're driving on these really snowy streets. And um, I just thought it would be fun to have that um, bundle of gifts kind of leaning out precariously too over to the side. I just thought it gave it a little extra whimsy. Then I'm going to take some Lawn Fawn Chili Pepper cardstock and die cut the word cheer from the new Sending Cheer Word Die. And I'm going to pop out all of those letters and I'm going to line them up carefully down at the bottom of my scene. You could absolutely use a ruler if you want to. I just tend to eyeball things. I like to lay it out first though to make sure that I'm going to get the spacing right. I not only want the spacing between the first and last letter and the edge of the card to be right, but also the spacing between each letter. So I'll just keep adjusting them until I have a look that I'm happy with and then I will pull the letters off one by one and begin to glue them down in place. So this is another place where I think it would be cute to have some foam tape and have the sentiment popped up. I think that would be um, really fun but like I said I really wanted to try to do a not a one layer card but a flat card. Um, so I decided not to use any foam tape on this one, which is kind of a challenge for me because I usually use it in most every card, but, um, it'll just be a lot cheaper to send through the mail. And when you're sending out so many cards in the holiday season, it's nice to save a little bit where you can. And I still think there is quite a lot of dimension. That word cheer even pushes that scene back even further. So it adds you know, a bit of dimension just by being in front of things. I'm going to pop that word Christmas down right above the C and the H, and then I'm going to pull in some Stardust Stickles. Of course, you knew I was going to finish off a card with that, didn't you? So I'm going to grab some of that and add it to the red bow on the Christmas wreath. And I'll add it to another bow and the whites of the polar bear's Santa hat. And my bottle got clogged a little bit there. So I actually just used the pin from my Barely Art glue to unclog that. I also added it to the headlights and then to the little green and red gifts that I didn't add any details to. And then one more bow at the very top. So that is going to complete this card. I'm going to lift that up to the camera so you can see all of those details. And I'll give you another peek at the inside as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This is all new products from the Hello Bluebird release that just took place. So if you're interested in any of those, I will have them listed and linked in the description bar below. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to like and subscribe, turn your notifications on so you don't miss any future videos. I post them every Monday and Friday. And if you'd like to keep watching, here is day five of the previous two years of holiday card series. You can click on either one to check them out. Thank you guys so much again for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. Bye-bye.